All right, looks like we're up on everything. Good evening, followers. I'm your lawyer, Patrick McGinn, and I am your best friend at your worst time. Welcome to my Wednesday evening live with Life and the Law, Law and the Life Live, which I do every Wednesday evening at six o'clock. Let me move this a little bit. And tonight's topic is arrest on the stay arrest for the stay-at-home orders. Currently in Florida, we have a state and several local stay-at-home orders as well as um, several cities and municipalities in the area have curfews in place. So I got the question a bunch of times over the last week or so, can you be arrested for violating the stay-at-home order? And the answer, the simple answer to that is yes, you can. It's an emergency order that's enacted by the government and it is a misdemeanor to be in violation of it. So if you're caught out doing one of the things that's not essential that you're not supposed to do, <coughs> it can be considered a violation of that stay at home order. And it's a misdemeanor. And Friday, I think it was, the Supreme Court issued an order. And if you're interested in looking at the order, it's in yesterday's video, I put a link to it. The Supreme Court of Florida issued an order which included information about arrests for violating the stay-at-home orders. And what's interesting is in that order, the Supreme Court directed the state authorities, corrections, and the courts to hold people no bond pending first appearance. So if you get arrested for violating a stay-at-home order, you will be taken to jail. Previously, a lot of officers were doing um, promise to appears or notice to appears, which they would let you sign and release you immediately from the scene. Now, supposedly, they have to transport you to the county jail. So additionally, not only do you get a ride to the jail, but you have to go before a first appearance judge. So if you get arrested, most likely you're gonna be spending the night in the county jail until you get the first appearance and then the first appearance judge will decide on what to you know whether to impose any pretrial restrictions or to release you on your own recognizance or post a cash bond or whatever the case may be those judges have a lot of discretion so they will they will make that determination at your first appearance um usually under the circumstances as they are here in south florida so many people get arrested per day that they usually don't make first appearance the same day they got arrested. Now, you know, before we were running, you know, sometimes 200 plus arrests per day, as of day before yesterday, they were running 48 arrests per day. So you may get before a judge the same day, although it is not likely. Usually they'll hold you over. They won't have you ready to make first appearance if you get arrested in that same day. And you'll end up having to be held over until the next day to make first appearance to go before that judge. So that covers the arrest. Yes, you can be arrested for it. So it once you're arrested for it, it goes to the system. It's set like a regular misdemeanor in county court. A misdemeanor in county court and they will process it through the system just like you know a trespass a battery or something like that and it'll go through the court system to be resolved in addition to that how do you get arrested for violating the stay at home order well obviously you don't stay at home and you do something that it isn't deemed essential so how do the police know that can they just drive down the road and stop you and see what you're doing the answer to that would be no when you have the stay-at-home orders have a list of activities which they deemed are, are essential that you're allowed to do. And it's a pretty big list. So they just can't randomly stop people and go, hey, what are you doing? Where are you going? You're going to pick up groceries or whatever. They have to have an individualized suspicion that you're in violation of the stay-at-home order and how they get that, I don't know. But anyway, they have to have the individualized suspicion to be able to stop you to develop probable cause that you're in violation of that order, which is unless you're like hanging out someplace doing something you're not supposed to be doing, they're probably really not going to bother you. If you're just driving down the road, you're not, you're not going to get stopped 
unless you do some other type of violation. Now, if you commit some type, maybe a traffic infraction or something, they have reason to stop you. And if during their stop, they develop probable cause that you're in violation of the order, they can arrest you. But they're just not going to go around and arrest you, you know, willy nilly, stop random cars and see what they're up to. Now, some jurisdictions, um, some of the municipalities down here in South Florida have curfews. Same thing with the curfews. The curfews have a lot of activities you're allowed to do. So before they can get you for a curfew violation, they have to have the reasonable suspicion to stop you that you're in violation of the curfew. And there's so many activities that you're permitted to do that that's you know not going to be something where they're going to the the municipalities that do have curfews are not going to be randomly stopping people to see if you're in violation of the curfew. Very different than a general curfew. Like those people that were down here after Hurricane Andrew, they instituted a general curfew, which after a certain time, unless you're the police or fireman or some type of government official, you could not be out. Couldn't go out to do anything unless you were coming home from work. If you were coming home from work and you, you had to be able to prove it because they would stop everybody in the curfew area. They'd set up roadblocks and they would, you had to live in the area. And, you know, if you told them you were coming home from work, you'd be fine but you just couldn't be out driving around within the curfew area after a specific time at night and before a specific time in the morning. Um, so that about covers it. That's that's the topic for today, kind of short, sweet, and to the point. Um, I'm interested in and in, always interested in what everybody's doing on the stay at home, under the stay at home orders. What type of things are you getting done? Um, I'm trying to stay busy and working a few hours on legal cases per day and you know, I'm stretching out my day, whereas I'm not quitting in the afternoon. Sometimes I'm one of those people that's more efficient working into the evening. So I'm working until, you know, sometimes 10, 11 o'clock at night and I'm weaving in work with activities that I want to do. Like one of the things I did today is I, I changed the lower unit oil and seals and water impeller on one of my outboard motors. And then I cleaned out part of the garage and pulled the boat out hose it down and it's all dusty because all of our boat ramps are closed so we can't go fishing although the, the state stay-at-home order allows recreation uh dade county closed all the boat ramps from my understanding so if you're doing something let me know what you're doing let's share some ideas because we are all in this together and uh we'll end up making it through together and i think we'll be better in the end um yesterday i did an update that covered all the recent court orders that have been issued for Miami-Dade County, Broward County, as well as the Supreme Court. In courts, basically everything suspended until either May 29th or June 1st, depending upon what you're doing. Only essential activities are going forward. And some judges, more and more judges are coming online with Zoom conferencing. So we are getting hearings done that way. We're all set up for that. We did a deposition this week on Zoom and everything, and it uh, worked out really well. So, you know, we're keeping busy. Also, if you're interested in taking any classes online, Harvard University is offering like 60 something classes free of charge online, as well as the at Florida Atlantic University is offering a free online certificate in hospitality and tourism management and if you're interested in either one of those or if you're interested in reading one of the court orders for yourself that's been issued those are all linked in yesterday's video so you could check it out there and those are all down in there um again a lot of questions about modifications of alimony and child support this week i think it's finally hitting home a lot of people are out of work and money is becoming an issue for a lot of people. So we're getting a lot of calls on the modification of the alimony and the child support. We're picking up a bunch of those cases, as well as domestic violence. Domestic violence seems to be spiking once again. And I guess it has something to do with everybody being cooped up together. But we've got a, a couple of those on the pipeline coming in. But uh, modifications of child support and alimony were probably the number one inquiries this week. And of course, if you ever have any questions about Florida family law or criminal defense or personal injury law, the three practice areas that I practice, feel free to contact me I'm on all the platforms, all the social media platforms. On Facebook, I am 
I have a business page, the law offices of Patrick McGeehan on also on Facebook. I have a private group, ask a Florida divorce lawyer and people ask some great questions in there. And I'm on Instagram, Snapchat, Tumblr as the magic city lawyer. And you can certainly always catch me on YouTube as your South Florida lawyer. You can DM me on any of those platforms, or you can email me directly at Patrick at PJM lawyer. You can sign up for my weekly newsletter at my website. And there's some free resources on that website. And the website address is pjmlawyer.com. Also, if you have a family law case going on now and you want to save yourself some money on attorney's fees, you can look at my cheat sheet or ebook, whatever you want to call it, and it will show you how to save some money on your family law attorney's fees. And that is available as the first pin tweet on my Twitter profile, which is at PJ McGeehan Law. So check that out if you want to save a couple bucks, probably more than a couple bucks, a lot of bucks on uh, some of your family law cases. Um, getting a bunch of questions together for topics for upcoming lives um, that I'll be doing next week and as well as updates. And I'll get those in the ringer and get those outlined out and get those shows on the go. I'm also looking for anybody who is doing anything novel on our lockdown um, to be a guest on the podcast, as well as other lawyers that practice different types of law or professionals who are being impacted by the stay at home orders as far as our employees go, just see how they're dealing with it. If you, you're dealing with it, or you have some novel idea of how to deal with it, please let us know because we're all, again, we're all in this together and we're looking for, uh, you know, to get out of this all together and intact. I think when this is finally over, when it is over, I don't know. I think the courts are going to be at least held up until the summertime. And, you know, whatever can do go online for video conferencing will get done. But all the major trials and stuff, I think they're still going to put those off. Um, just to give you an idea, I had a case set for trial in Broward last Friday. It got reset for late August of this year. So that gives you an idea how far they're thinking ahead, how far they're going to be on. All right, let's see if we have any questions here. We are on TikTok Live where we have a bunch of people on here. Biggest Miami fan, always good to see you. Let's see if we have any questions. Eating chicken nuggets. I love chicken nuggets from McDonald's. I haven't eaten out. I've eaten, well, I went to get takeout the other day, last week. And that's the first time I've been eating away from home since this whole thing started, so three weeks. Working and playing video games and doing some yard work. Yeah, I think that's a lot of people. Good. Do your mentoring. If you if you can do something for somebody during this time, if some, you know your neighbors need help or whatever, of course, not violating any of these social distancing requirements. But if you could do something for somebody, reach out to them and do it. I mean, the karma that comes from that, the good karma that comes from that is uh, is amazing. All right. The infected police officers. That changes things. All right. I wanted to ask if you heard about I heard about it. I heard BSO has a lot of people that are down that have tested positive. I heard a big portion of their dispatch is uh, has tested positive. As far as my former department, Miami Dade, I don't know what the statistics are on officers uh, that are infected that have been sent home. Um, as far as I know, I have a couple friends in dispatch. I don't think there's any problems in Miami Dade dispatch and the other departments. I just don't know about. But I did read an article earlier today that New York transit employees are testing positive at three times the rate of police officers in the city of New York. So that's that's kind of interesting. How long have I been practicing law? Let me think. 13 years. And before that, I was a homicide detective with Miami Dade Police Department. So this is a second career for me. Yeah, it's alarming. It's alarming how many people are, are testing positive. It's good that, you know, a lot of people are getting through it and recovering from it, but it is alarming how many people are testing positive for it. And it's concerning because, you know, they keep preaching this, this curve thing and flatten the curve. Well, when is this curve going to come? And is there going to be a rebound infection or a second, you know, peak in it? I don't know. That's 
all that stuff is way beyond my, I guess, pay grade. And I just, you know, I just got to go by what everybody else sees. But one thing I did do is, is I quit watching constant news because it was driving me crazy. It was just stressing me out to watch all this stuff all the time and just made it 10 times worse. So I, I basically quit watching the news. I'll check in every now and then, you know, maybe once or twice a day, but that's it. I don't, I don't keep the news on all the time in the office anymore. It's just too crazy. Um, yeah, hopefully it's seasonal. Hopefully it goes along with the regular flu season and it ends when, you know, the regular flu season ends, which is what sometime midsummer, early summer. I don't know. I think, you know, personally, I think this is going to last, you know, so I think we're looking at July or August and there's going to be a lot of people who, are out of business you know i know a lot of lawyers who are really sweating and, and trying to make plans about you know how they're going to survive there may be a lot of you know a lot of restaurants too and a lot of small businesses that may never come back from this but i think if you're able to you know persevere and struggle through this in your business you'll be in a better position when it is all over to move forward but I can just see, you know, I can see um, as far as a legal field goes, I can see new areas of law opening up and just an explosion, like in family law, um, certainly in criminal law and, um, you know, whatever specialty areas that are related to this. I'm trying to get a, a worker's comp attorney to come on to on to um, my podcast to discuss uh, the workers' comp issue as related to getting infected by the coronavirus. Because a lot of people are having questions about, hey, I think I got infected at work. You know, a lot of nurses, and because I represent a lot of a lot of cops, a lot of firefighters, and a lot of nurses from, uh, you know, my relationships that I had when I was a homicide detective. And they're asking me, you know, hey, if I get infected while I'm at work, does that come under workman's comp on the job injury? You know, how how does that work? And me, I don't know. That's an area that I do not I do not practice and I do not know anything about. So I'm trying to get this workers comp lawyer to come on and maybe explain some of that stuff. There have been some uh, administrative orders that have come out of the Department of Labor related to that. I'm trying to get him on, you know, clear some time on his schedule where he can come on and discuss that with us and maybe give us some answers. And if you have, you know, if you're a lawyer that practices in another part of the country and you want to be on the podcast, certainly get a hold of me and uh, we'll get you on. Always interested to talk to other lawyers as well as other professionals or anybody that's doing anything novel. I mean, if you've if you've come up with a great way to deal with this or you've been helping out in the community in some way and, you know, let me know. Contact me and we'll get you on here. All right, let's check in. We're on today. We're live on, of course, TikTok. We're always live on YouTube. That's the, the main streaming platform that I use. And I've been going live the last couple of times on Facebook. So we're on those live platforms. I went live yesterday also on Instagram, but I can't get my other device up and running on Instagram to get on there. But I'm going to try to do it regularly on Instagram also. So we'll be live on the YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and always TikTok. Anyway, let's look. Let's see we have on Facebook. Betsy, it's always good to see you. I miss you. I hope you're doing well up there in the UP of Michigan. And let's see. Let me go back through TikTok and see what else we have going on here. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know if this, if this thing starts ravaging police departments as far as their staffing levels go. I know that, that Miami-Dade County sent out a memo looking for people that may want to come back to work. But if it starts knocking, you know, patrol officers out and affecting staffing levels, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen then. All right, Twimble. Trimble and Twitch checked in. That's one of my most favorite TikTok accounts. I love those dogs. Anyway, I always watch your videos. Uh, nervous out of smiles. I'm concerned about the mental health outcome once people come out of isolation. I think that's a concern, but I think it's also, I think the mental health 
while you're in isolation is also an issue. I think it's going to start there. I mean, this is my personal opinion. I think it's going to start there. And then when it comes out, I mean, what's, what is normal going to be when this is all over, especially if this goes on for another month or two? I mean, how, how is this going to affect personal relationships? How is this going to affect socialization? How is it going to affect business relationships and how we deal with other people? All right, biggest Miami fan. I'm trying to figure out why your shirt is bright blue. It's dark blue. I wore the I wore the the bright blue one last week. All right, on TikTok it's dark blue, but it's light blue on the TV. I don't know though, but it's it's a dark blue. We were watching in the office since I'm working. All right, L Walker. Good evening. It's good to see you. All right, L. Walker, how, hello, how, you know, it's, it's hell getting old when you can't read. Hello, do you know much about financial law? Not really. I practice three, I practice three areas of law. I practice criminal defense, family law. I do everything in family law except adoption and termination of parental rights. And I practice personal injury accidents, but only car and commercial vehicle accidents. So the only financial law I know other than fraud that falls under the criminal umbrella would be the financial disclosure requirements in family law cases. And that's about it. So let me check. That looks like it for questions. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. I'm very humbled that as many people check in and, and view my material and view my content as does. I'm very humbled about that and I'm honored. And one of the main reasons I do it is not only to get information out to you to be helpful to you in case you have a legal issue in one of these areas or, you know, you have a, a question about building a business or running a law practice or anything like that. Not It's not only to get information out from you, it's to learn from you. I learn more from my clients and my followers than probably any other source anywhere. And it's just been eye-opening. And I always try to share some of those lessons that I learn um, with you. Um, it looks about it. it. looks like all the platforms are up and running. They're all the questions answered. I'll give a few more seconds on, on TikTok here. If you haven't been on TikTok, TikTok is just like the greatest thing in the world. You can find me there. I'm the Magic City Lawyer there. That's my account. I just love that. It's the neatest social media platform I can I've ever seen. Can you say hi to Avery? Hi Avery, how are you? Miami fan, have a good evening. Stay safe. Everybody stay healthy. Remember, we're all in this together. We're all going to get through it together and in the end it'll be we'll all be much stronger. And you know, try to focus on the positive instead of the negative. One of the one of the positive things that, um, that I focus on, you know, every day I try to sit down and go, okay, what's good happened today? You know, I got some work done on the boat. I got work done on a couple of cases. I got a bunch of motions filed this morning that I needed to file. So always trying to make progress. Even if you only accomplish one thing per day, you know, that's progress. And that's, that's, you know, that's commendable under these times and just keep focused on your positive aspects. Other positive aspects, as far as like saving money, I'm saving a bundle of money, I'm not eating out. I'm getting about three weeks to a gallon on, on my car. I filled up my car. When I filled up my car, like two or three, two weeks ago, I filled up my car and it, you know, we're just not going anywhere. So we're saving, you know, you're saving there and I'm saving just a bundle and dry cleaning on a loan. Uh, the dry cleaning bills were running, you know, a hundred, 150, almost 200 bucks every other week. And that's, basically been cut out because all you have to do to appear on uh, any of the hearings that we're doing on, on Zoom is, you know, wear a shirt and tie, maybe a coat, throw a coat on, but that's it. I mean, the you're not wearing it all day because that's just ridiculous. You know, I, I put on the clothes to appear for court if I have or to appear for a conference if I have that. And then it's like, you know, T-shirts and flip-flops the rest of the day. And, then, you know, be comfortable. I mean, do do what works for you. And if something great works for you, um, let me know about it. And uh, I had I had somebody on one of my there, here's an idea that I came up with. I had somebody on one of my well, I'll make another video about that. So 
That'll be another video for another topic. I won't let that cat out of the bag. White boy 68, what do you know about constitutional law? As far as it applies to criminal law, I, I mean, I know enough as far as it applies to the cases that I deal with. You see, a lot of lawyers, I mean, I guess most lawyers, at least most that I know, know their practice areas really well. So, I mean, my practice areas of, that I can think of, of criminal defense and family law, they have constitutional aspects related to them. And I know those constitutional aspects as relates to my area of practice. But for example, I'm, you know, I may not be very knowledgeable on interstate commerce and how the interstate, how the commerce clause applies to certain things going on that aren't criminal and how the federal government gets their authority from the commerce clause was from the commerce clause in certain areas of interstate commerce i mean i know how it applies to like firearms and firearm crimes and stuff like that and i know constitutional protections for my clients but that's it i mean i know how it applies to the areas i practice looney 5216 just wanted to say thank you for all your videos i love doing them i love meeting with you guys um i try to get on here every single week wednesday eastern 6 p.m eastern and then i've been doing updates on mondays i didn't get to it this monday because this monday was absolutely crazy i just got too busy so i did the monday update on tuesday and talked about new court orders that came out anyway it's been my pleasure i'm glad you checked in here i hope to see you all again for everybody that checked in everybody that asked a question everybody that just came in and spent a couple seconds you know seeing what i have to say i truly appreciate it and betsy it's always great to see you um that looks like it got all the platforms covered i don't think i have any more questions good night everybody stay safe stay healthy help your fellow man we're all in this together and i will see you next week